Today it's going to be my pleasure to be talking to one of the game's most colourful characters. A fact that anyone who's ever received a half-time volley off him will surely testify to. It's the one and only Barry Fry. Hey! Nationwide television from one part of the country to the other, and we're playing like Nancy's. Pufters! It's a man's game! Get your sleeves rolled up! Let's get out of here and show them summer! Barry, remember the first time we came into contact with each other? Bet you don't. Yeah, I think we was uh, playing against each other and I couldn't get round you, could I? <laughs> well, you tried hard <laughs> enough. I'll tell you, tell you what, what happened that day. I'd just taken over as player manager at Kettering Town. You were playing for Bedford. Mm. And you were always a bit of a wheeler dealer even then, even though you weren't in management, because I always remember I was trying to tap a kid playing for Bedford named John Hawksby, who yeah, I knew to be a good player. player. Yeah. And you kept edging up to me and saying, don't take him, I'll come, I'll come. That's right, take me, but you was always a good judge <laughs> and you never took me and took John no, Hawksby. No. You were a great talent, but an amusement arcade. Wasted talent. <laughs> Oh, and I was going to come on to that to start no, with. No. The early rumours I heard of you in the early 60s, mm. even Bestie was like a choir boy in comparison when you were a kid at Man U, wasn't he? Well, that's right. I think that's where I went wrong. I mean, uh, coming from Bedford is like a village, you know, and uh, playing for England schoolboys six times, scoring five goals, and then going you to Manchester United. You don't remember it too United. well, then, do you? Yeah, yeah, I remember it. It's the only thing I can remember. Um, it, you know, I had the world at my feet, and to be honest, uh, you know, drinking, womanising, gambling took over. So you had no faults? No, I had no, no it faults all whatsoever. Quality, you're always a star. <laughs> and that's what I say to the lads now, particularly now with the contracts mm. about, you know, you've got to dedicate yourself and discipline yourself and make sacrifices because you can be a multi-millionaire nowadays if you get two or three year contract. Whereas those days, the, ma the maximum wage was only yeah. 20 quid and I never ever got nowhere near that either. <laughs> right, so there were more good judges than me then, weren't there? Oh yeah, there were. So you, yeah. you finish your career, I can remember you going to Bedford, and then yeah. your first managerial post was at uh, Dunstable, wasn't it? I mean, Dunstable, when I first went there, the first game there was 32 spectators. The next game there was 43, you know, my old family come and things like that. But <laughs> it really was, you had to get something going. So I went up to Manchester and seen Bestie in Slack Alice. Anyway, cut a long story short, he agreed to come and play. So I'd done a deal with Tommy Dock, uh, who said, who are you playing? I said, I ain't got any opposition at the moment. He said, well, I'll fetch a Manchester United team down. So we played Manchester United at Dunstable in front of 10,000. Um, people was packing the streets and yeah. it was unbelievable. We won 3-2. We was on news at 10 and I mean, it, it put us on the map. And because of that, um, it allowed me to attract some good players. And I bought three players off you, Trevor Peck, John Hawksby, George yeah. Cleary. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and then I, I, I got a few more. Jeff Astle came and done brilliant. Got 34 goals for me that year, and and we won promotion from the Southern League that very next year. But I couldn't have done it, Ron, without your help, without them oh. three brilliant players. You also mate. did it with a best star, because I remember talking to them lads. You said, you don't believe it. You, you can't believe it. You said, he's hired the England... Didn't you have the England coach? We had the England coach. I, I didn't I, I, Greenwood. You yeah. had the, the big thing, didn't you, with a waitress on board oh, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Jeff Astle was saying it was better than when he was in... It's prime, like, you know. Well, that's right. I, I tried to treat my players as if they was at the Arsenal or Man United or Chelsea, and it worked because uh, they thought they was the, the tops, and they played like the tops. Yeah. We scored 105 league goals and got promotion, which was brilliant. You moved from there to Barnet, where yeah. you have a hell of a time. You I mean, you're runners up three years on the bounce in the conference, yeah. and then yeah. you win the conference. But in that period, where does Stan Flashman rate? As in, in your list of chairmen? He was always sacking me. If you didn't agree with Stan, he sacked you. Yeah. And, um, I mean, he was an amazing man. He was the most generous man in the world one day. You know, he'd put a load of reddies on the table for the lads, um, things like that. He used to look after us. We used to go to the best shows in town, everything. But then the other side of him, he was evil can evil. He'd come in the dressing room and I'd be saying, unlucky, lads, you know, we've won one or unlucky, terrific, you know, we've missed the penalty, we've hit the bar, we've hit the post, should have won four. And the door would come off its hinges and he'd walk in and he'd say, you lot taking a piss out of me, you're sacked, Willis, you're sacked, I'll rip your contract up. And I'd say, hold on, Stan, you can't do that. Can't I? And he'd piss off out. <laughs> and then he'd come back with, with Harry, uh, Roger Willis's contract yeah. and he'd say, can't rip it up, there you are, rip it up, go on, F off. So, of course, Harry went white, yeah. he's a black man, yeah. who went white and <laughs> looked like that. And he, he just banned him from playing, yeah. banned him from the ground and everything. And, and 
I said, Harry, take no notice, mate. The contract's with lodged with the yeah, Football Association. Yeah. That's only our copy. You yeah. know, you got your copy. Don't don't take no notice. Anyway, five days later, we're playing Watford in the Art Senior Cup, and I'm saying to Harry, I'll get hold of Gary Bull. They both live in Nottingham at the time. As Harry is, is not too well, but I said, tell him to come. He said, no, he didn't. So Stan phones me out. He says, what's happening with Willis? I said, I've told him to come. I'm playing him against Watford. No, you ain't. He says, I'll have the boys there. As soon as he gets out of the car, I'll break his legs <laughs> when we come. I said, Stan, that's my own player you're talking about. So anyway, I told Harry that. I said, Harry, if you come in here, he's going to break your legs. But I said, don't take no notice. Come the cricket field way and I'll get you in the back. Come up for corners with your so, head, yeah. So um, it, it, it was touch and go yeah. wherever he turned up. But he did turn up and he came. Stan never bothered. We won 5-2, Harry got a hat-trick. Yeah. So we're in the dressing room afterwards, celebrating and all that, and Brian Ayres, the secretary, comes in, he says, Harry, Stan's on the phone, he wants you. So, of course, all goes silent, and Harry walks out, about ten minutes later, he comes back beaming. What did he say? He said, they are, son, tell that Barry Fry, that's motivation. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you, you said there about him being a comma. You didn't need too much encouragement, and I can remember you bringing Man United to play one night at Barnes. Oh no, you was brilliant. And you've mate. gone. I said, Barry, the pitch has got to be right. We're trying a few out, like, and they weren't dummies. There's the Brian Robsons yeah, of the world, yeah. the Gordon McQueens, yeah, the Ray yeah. Wilkins, and all. Oh, perfect, Nick. Pitch is in perfect, Nick. I turn up there, there's holes in it, there's ice chips. For you to come down, Manchester United, yeah, yeah. to come and play at Barn, it was absolutely fantastic. And when you phoned me to say what the weather was like, <laughs> it was a sheet of ice. <laughs> but I needed the game, mate, so I said, no, it's perfect here, pal. And I knew once you got there, uh, knowing you, uh, you'd play. Then you take them into the league and you, yeah. you have success in the league and so forth. And, and right, so and you begin, yeah. you've got this reputation anyway as a yeah. wheeler dealer. Yeah. And then you go to South End, where where it's, I, in fact, only the other day somebody said the only fella in the world that Stan Collymore will play for is Barry Fry. So well, I've asked him to come here, but he said I ain't got enough money. <laughs> 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 to be fair, it's our friend. He played with a smile on his yeah. face. You know, he's on 525 quid a week, 3,333 quid a year signing on, but he played with a smile on his face, yeah. and he was brilliant. I mean, he was a terrific ambassador on and off the field for South End United Football Club. The fans loved him, the players loved him, he was, he was good fun. Yeah. And I thought at the time, and I said to you, Stan Collymore was as good as I've seen. Because yeah. of his strength, because of his power, did, yeah. because of his pace, he could do everything. Mm. And he Mind could excite you there. Every other player you've ever had, you've told me that. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but you did say earlier on I was a con man. <laughs> <laughs> so you leave there, you, you know, natural progression. And then you get mm. a big one. Because at the time, and I remember you being all over the papers, and I thought, I'll have to slap him a bit, because yeah, I was at did. the villa at the I time. Know, and, yeah, you'd, yeah. Um, and then you got the Birmingham job. Yeah. Now, once again, you know, you've never gone, you've, you don't seem to have had the traditional, what is the traditional board of directors, wherever you've been, do you? I've read about... Um, David Sullivan, the Pawn King, and Karen Brady, is, is Bimba, or whatever he called her and all so that. There were a lot of appealing and, things and, for and you straight thought, away, weren't there? Uh, yeah, without a doubt, I thought <laughs> I'll have some of this. <laughs> I thought they're a gimmick, like, you know, yeah. they've got to be a gimmick, this lot. They're, they've just come in and a bit of publicity yeah. and blah, 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 and they'll, they'll milk it and then they'll go. But when I met them, absolute opposite, yeah. you know, and, and, and I said to David and I said to Karen, well, what are you doing here? You, you, you know, what is it? It's from an outsider. It's a a gimmick sort of thing. She said, no, no, we're very serious. I'm very keen on football. I've worked for David for a long time and made millions and millions. I want to do the same at football and give it to you to spend. So that really was interesting <laughs> and intriguing. Just things, things, because you, you annoyed me a lot when you took over there because, yeah. you know, you started pushing me off the back page and everything. <laughs> I thought, well, no, when do I get my name in the paper like the Birmingham Mail? I remember but... you ringing me up and saying, oi, <laughs> this city... There ain't room for two of us in this city, bugger off. <laughs> I think Karen had sacked me every day of the week for the first year I was there. She did not know where I was coming from at all. I said to Karen, I said, listen, I've got to take the lads away. We, we've got to get a bit of team spirit, you know, I've got to take them away. I want to take them to Springs for four or five days. Uh, what, what, what does it cost? Three grand, four grand, whatever it costs. Yeah. She said, yeah, OK, I've spoke to David Sullivan, good idea, take yeah. him away. So I took him away at Springs. As we're going away, I get a phone call from Karen. She says, uh, Peshtuck can't come with you. He was our leading goal scorer and yeah. striker. Pesh can't come. He's had to have a quarter zone in his knee, blah, blah, blah. So I said, oh, that's a pity. And it takes 48 hours to... Yeah. So he can't move. So I'll pick him up and take him home and all that. I said, all right, thanks, love, and all that. So I got to the... 
springs and you know what it's like the the lads have a massage in a sauna and then you take them down the pub and have a few drinks it, it's, it's just t uh, team building sort of thing and then we're just all round having a drink and all that and I says pity Pesh can't be and of course the lads are spitting their beer out <laughs> so what's the matter with you well don't you know don't I know what well Pesh and Karen what about them they're an item I went leave it out you've got to be joking no 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 they're an item and all that so now I'm livid because I think Karen's yeah. topped me and yeah. took him out of the equation uh, for selfish reasons, sort yeah. of thing. So anyway, a few days later, we're back at St Andrews and all that, and Karen calls me uh, into her office and uh, she says, oh, I've heard in the dressing room you've got problems. So I go, the only problem I've got in the dressing room is you sorting one of my players out. <laughs> So, of course, she goes bananas at me. But, I mean, she's single, he's single. Yeah, there yeah, weren't a problem, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I said, you kept a player for it. She said, no, no. And anyway, I had the doctrine and all yeah. that, and, and he explained that Pesci had this problem with his knee before. But I, I went bananas at Karen. Because yeah. she was quite strong, wasn't she? Very, started. very powerful lady. And very, uh, yeah. um, I mean, I, I got a lot of respect for yeah. her because she'd done a lot at yeah. St Andrews. When I went there, Ronnie, yeah. it was a Kazi, mate. Yeah. Ain't had a cunt of no. paint for 40 no. years. And she told me she had this model of this stadium. And St Andrews is a magnificent grand. Yes. And it's down to her. And I thought it was, you know, a five minute wonder. She'd been there eight or nine years now. Fair play to her. And whenever we had arguments, whether it was David Sullivan, Karen Brady, or me, I think all of us wanted the best for Blues, be, yeah. in, but, yeah. but it was our opinion of what was yeah. the best, you know. I mean, there you had mixed, like, first year, at the end of it, very disappointing. You, you might have gone up with South End if you'd have stayed. Uh, and exact, I went down yeah, with Birmingham. Yeah, the exact opposite. I went down, you, you, But you know, from there, you know, you, the following year must have been good for you. Oh, we'd done the double, didn't we? Yeah. We won the second division championship, which yeah. was brilliant, because yeah. only one went up automatically yes. that year. They was restructuring the league. Yeah. We went to Wembley in the auto windscreen, golden goal. Probably there you got your name. That people started to say, this fella must be half a daily. Because mm. I used to look in the paper, there'd be seven coming in, four going out, three going out. I made profit, oh, net yeah, profit no at Barnet, two and a half million. Yeah. At South End, six and a half million. Mm. At Birmingham, 11.8 million profit with yeah. my wills and deals. Here I've made four and a half, Peterborough. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter what they say about yeah. me... That's management, though. That is. Yeah. Surely the way, it was, the way it was structured, you know, the board and the, the chief executive being a woman, mm. surely it must have had a slight air of, uh, like, a soap opera almost, because I've heard stories, and one particular story I've heard about is an incident that happened with... Uh, Edwin Steen, one of your coaches at the time. You know, unfortunately, um, he didn't always get on with Karen and he upset her time and time again. And uh, she's a powerful lady and, and you can't upset her too many times. But uh, I was on my way to the training ground, so she rang me and she said, I want you to instantly dismiss Edwin Steen. So I said, why? She said, for calling me a <laughs> So I said, well, if I dismissed all the players that called me a <laughs> I wouldn't have a team, Karen. <laughs> But she got her own back because, um, you know, at that time Edwin had all this posh BMW yeah. with all the wheels and the stereo and everything. And uh, to be fair, she took it off him and uh, gave him a, not a push bike, but a Rover. So that's <laughs> your first year ends with mm. glorious disaster. Getting relegated, I yeah. mean, was, was, I did say to David and Karen, I'll take you out of that, this league. Yeah. I didn't tell them that I'd get them relegated. <laughs> and their sense of humour wasn't very good yeah. at the time. Yeah. You know, so that summer we had to get up. Yeah. You, you know, we had to win the second division, which we did. We took them to Wembley, 78,000 people at yeah. Wembley, which was bigger than the Liverpool and what's yeah. the name, uh, Coca-Cola Cup yeah. final at Bolton, the time. Yeah. You had a special poignant moment at the start of the year as you came up the tunnel, which is mm. whatever level you're going, particularly yeah. with a crowd in it, it's, it's a wonderful feeling for the manager. But you had a special... Well, I did. I mean, leading the team out and, and my son, Adam, in front of me, that, that was real special and it was mm. fantastic. Now, surely you must have thought, right, we will be in the Premiership in the next two years. Oh, well, I'm I on did. The road. Well, I I'm did. On the road. And, and now, what happened from there? Because Well, the, the, the third year I was there, I, I, I mean, I kept saying to them, you, you know, I cannot keep going to Cambridge and getting Daisy for 50 grand yeah. and Claridge for 200 grand and mm. Jose for 80 grand and and, and um, Steve Finnan for 25 grand from yeah. Welling. Yeah. You know, this is a big club. I've got to be going to a premiership yeah. club and getting a premiership player or two yeah. to mix with this young talent that I'd, I'd got and, and things like that. 
So we slipped down the table a little bit. In saying that, we done very, very well in the Coca-Cola Cup. Oh, I came to most of yeah. those games. But for, for our club to get to the semi-final oh, of brilliant. a major competition, brilliant. first brilliant. time they'd done it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And then, um, you know, by this time we'd had a lot of injuries. We'd sold all our top players. You know, Stevie mm. Clouds had gone to Leicester. Daisy had gone to Coventry mm. down the road and things like that. And um, we was planning really for the following season. Yeah. I fancied Marcus Stewart strong. I'd met his agent and Marcus, yeah. and uh, it was going to be a tribunal. I couldn't agree terms mm. with uh, the thing, but he signed a four-year contract for us to yeah. move back to Birmingham. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was after Spencer Pryor as well. I was also after uh, Martin O'Connor from Walsall. So I'd got all these signings lined yeah. up, told the board. The board was quite happy with it. So we fizzled out the season. We finished just below... Um, we finished off on a high because the very last game of the season we played Villa yeah. in the Birmingham Senior Cup, which um, Birmingham hadn't won for 17 years, and we beat Villa 2-0. You wouldn't have done it if I'd still no, been there, no, but no, 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 we did. And the next day was the PFA do in, in Sopwell House in St yeah. Albans. Uh, so I stayed overnight, went into my office, you know, where Jack, Jolly Jack, Jack our chairman at the time, I invited him down to have a bit yeah. of golf and all that and have a drink and a cigar afterwards, which he loved, so he was going to do it. So anyway, he walked past my office. I said, morning, Jack. Normally he goes swinging, first yeah, yeah, year, yeah, all yeah. that. <laughs> Never said a word. Walked by. I thought, strange. Anyway, five, ten minutes later, Alan Jones come. And he said, Jack wants to see you in Karen's office. So I went in there, and he was pacing up and down. I went, all right, pal. He says, uh, I, I, I can't do it. I said, what, can't come tonight? I said, don't bother about it. I said, it's only a piss up, you know, it's only a laugh and yeah. all that. Don't worry. No, no, I can't do it. You don't understand. I can't do it. Can't come. I said, all right, don't matter. You know, um, he said, yeah, but you don't realise why I can't do it. And I said, well, why can't you do it? And he says, well, you, you, you know, they want to get rid of you. So I said, who wants to get rid of me? He said, the board, they've got rid of you. So I said, what do you mean? So, and then he, he filled yeah. up Jack, and, and there's me saying, Jack, don't worry. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you mean I've got a sack? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I, I, I can't believe it. Really, although you... There was a bit of strange vibrations on the, on the weekend. Yeah. You didn't really get a, a definite feeling? That you, Never had a feeling. I mean, why no. did they let me go and sign these yeah, players yeah. And, and what have you? How big was a disappointment that must have been for you? It's the biggest in my life. Yeah. No question about that. It's the biggest kick in the watch it's of yeah. my life. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't believe it. You see, the irony of it all is, yeah. Barry, whenever I talk to anybody, like the people you've mentioned, they have nothing but praise for you, for the job you no, did there. I mean, I, I go out with the Birmingham yeah, directors yeah. now, I stay in their house, we have yeah. lo lovely weekends yeah. with friends, and, yeah. and I really want them to do well, they yeah. deserve to do well. Which is We've quite nice, really, you lost the job. Yeah, I lost friends. a job, I mean, yeah, it happens, yeah. and, and I've, I'll never forget, I got home and I was, I phoned Kirst, and uh, I said, you, you ain't going to believe it. She said, you got the sack. She said, well, nothing's new to my missus. Yeah. She said, you expect to get the sack, you've got it. So I met the kids from school, and, and young Adam in particular had been out to Wembley yeah. and all that. All his bedrooms full of blues, yeah. scarves, yeah. rattles, everything you can imagine. So I walked home from school with him. I told him I got the sack, and he said, why? I said, I ain't got a clue, but I got the sack. It happens in football, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, when I got home, there's all cameras and all that, so he runs up to his bedroom and all that, and I do an interview, mm. I ain't got a clue what I'm saying and all that. And I go inside, and I try to get David Sullivan again, but, but I can't. Mm. So then I go upstairs because I'm leaving, and uh, my boy's in tears, yeah. and he's ripped everything from his really? bedroom walls, and absolutely... That's probably a part that people don't quite realise how it does affect your Ron, family. It, that, that killed yeah. me. Seeing yeah. him, I couldn't yeah. comfort him, and... And all this mm. wonderful stuff that he'd, you, you, you know, he'd ripped to pieces, yeah. and it was all, and I couldn't believe it. And you, you get out, and you, you're choked up, and yeah. you, 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 how it affects your family.